Hello and welcome to Midday Connection on November 17th, 2023. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we're here at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo, Texas, and we haven't done this in about a month. It's kind of interesting how life can keep going on uh, and all the various things that both Natalie and I have had to do with our families and other events. But uh, it is uh, the third Friday, Friday before Thanksgiving, and so we thought we would try to do this message today and see how it plays out. I certainly hope you've been continuing with your lectionary readings um, over these last couple months. I know that there's been some challenging stuff, and even today is going to be a little challenging with some unfamiliar texts for us, but... Uh, Let's go ahead and get into it. Let me open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings that you do continue to provide for us. And we thank you, Lord, that as we enter into this thankful season with Advent soon approaching, uh, that we know that you are a God of seasons and appointed times and sacred times. And so even in the midst of busyness of life, you give us an opportunity to slow down and be present with you and present with one another. I pray, Lord, that as we read your word today, that we ourselves would be transformed by it and help us, therefore, to share your good news in a world that so desperately needs to hear it. We thank you and praise you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Starting today with Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. And Psalm 148, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his host. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. And we've got um, some passages from Nehemiah chapter 12, starting in verse 27 and bouncing around a little bit and concluding in verse 47. So starting at verse 27. Now at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought out the Levites in all their places to bring them to Jerusalem to celebrate the dedication with rejoicing, with thanksgiving, and with singing, with cymbals, harps, and lyres. The companies of the singers gathered together from the circuit around Jerusalem and from the villages of the Notophathites, also from Beth Gilgal and from the region of Geba and Asmaveth. For the singers had built for themselves villages around Jerusalem, and the priests and the Levites purified themselves, and they purified the people and the gates and the wall. Then I brought the leaders of Judah up onto the wall and appointed two great companies that gave thanks and went in procession. And the singers sang with Jezehiah as their leader. They offered great sacrifices that day and rejoiced, for God had made them rejoice with great joy. The women and children also rejoiced. The joy of Jerusalem was heard far away. On that day, 
men were appointed over the chambers for the stores, the contributions, the first fruits, and the tithes, to gather, them, uh, gather into them the portions required by the law for the priests and for the Levites from the fields belonging to the towns. For Judah rejoiced over the priests and the Levites who ministered. They performed the service of their God and the service of purification, as did the singers and the gatekeepers, according to the command of David and his son Solomon. For in the days of David and Asaph, long ago, there was a leader of the singers, and there were songs of praise and thanksgiving to God. In the days of Zerubbabel and in the days of Nehemiah, all Israel gave the daily portions for the singers and the gatekeepers. They set apart that which was for the Levites, and the Levites set apart that which was for the descendants of Aaron. And turning to Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 16. Then I saw heaven opened, and there was a white horse. Its rider is called, is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems. And he has a name inscribed that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, wearing fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, sword with, with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name inscribed, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And our gospel text today comes from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through, goodness gracious, why do I have all my little things in the wrong places? Matthew 16, verses 13 through 20. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. And back to our Psalms, Psalm 32. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and that I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you, at a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked. But steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. O righteous and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. And our final psalm today is Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. 
Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I tried to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. O oh, that you would kill the wicked, O oh God, and that the bloodthirsty would depart from me. Those who speak of you maliciously and lift themselves up against you for evil, do I not hate those who hate you, O oh Lord, and do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me, and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. I have missed doing this. I have. It has been a while. It has been a while. Yes. Um, yeah, there's been a lot going on. Um, if you have been keeping up with the daily lectionary readings, you will know that we've been doing actually a lot in Ezra and in Nehemiah, and and even our daily lectionary readings have included sections from both, uh, even within the midst of what we normally read. And so it's been a lot of reading. Um, and th what this whole um, end of Nehemiah um, as you know, the people of Israel had been sent into exile by God because the people had not repented of the evil that they had been doing. God raised up the Assyrians and then God raised up the Babylonians and they'd been, uh, the northern kingdoms were sent off to Assyria, the southern kingdom was sent off to Babylon. Um, and prior to us taking our little break, we'd been doing a lot of reading in Jeremiah and in Lamentation, and that was even describing what was taking place right prior to that exile. But we know that after a time appointed by God, God allowed for Nehemiah to come back and rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, and he allowed Ezra, who was sometimes called Zerubbabel, to come back and rebuild the temple. And so Ezra and Nehemiah together are, um, are contemporaries of one another, and uh, there is overlap in the story where one is talking about the rebuilding of the wall and the other more about the rebuilding of the temple. But here they are in Nehemiah, this dedication of the city wall, all of the hassles and trials and, uh, and animosity and external threat and even internal threat that was going on as they were rebuilding the wall, how Nehemiah was so consistent and how he encouraged the people to stay consistent and how all of the plots and, and planning of the enemy all came to naught. They were able to complete the wall. And here they are having a dedication and it is full of rejoicing and singing and uh, reestablishing the role of the Levites and then the priests. And so even in Nehemiah with the building of the wall, here is this temple responsibilities where the Levites who had been scattered themselves, the Levites who had not been working in the temple because the temple had been destroyed, now they have a chance to come back and fulfill their responsibilities. But we see how so much of that is just flat out the worship of God. Um, and just the rejoicing that goes on with that. And, and, and so, you know, what does it mean for us today? One, I know that 
we can trust that God is always faithful to his covenant. He had mm -hmm. given prophetic word that this would happen, right. that the city would be rebuilt, that the temple would be rebuilt. And even when the people had been in exile, that was not, the plan is never exile. The plan right. is always restoration, reconciliation, them coming back to God. So the difficulties and trials that we face, and sometimes even the judgment that we bear right. because of our sins, um, God is faithful and God is just uh, and God is merciful um, and forgiving. And so right. Old Testament stuff, this is the celebration of promises fulfilled, uh, good hard work that results in completion of the stuff, and then even recognizing that so much of their work does revolve around worship. And right. so how do we worship? How do we recognize that there's a lot of things that we need to do in our lives? But if we focus on the worship of God, um, bringing in our gifts, bringing in our tithes, bringing in our first fruits, that the, that the church of God uh, can continue to do the things uh, that it's intended to do. The whole purpose of humans on earth is to give glory to God. And, and sometimes that requires, you know, singers and priests and all the stuff. And it's right. just, it, it is what it kind of requires. And the people participate as uh, those appointed for those tasks do their job. So even people doing their job <clears throat> is a, an occasion for celebration. Right. Well, and in that whole restoration after this exile, um, even when there is correction, even when there are difficulties, we are always invited. We're always, that's always, like you said, that's the goal, to be restored, to be um, reconciled. And so um, in a, talking about God, you know, fulfilling his covenant, his promises, so you have the Levites who, as you said, they have been scattered, and so, but they're brought back in. But then, even in that, um, there is this provision for the Levites. Mm -hmm. They've set apart what is for the Levites, then the Levites set apart what is there for the descendants of Aaron. But all of those things and those uh, promises of provision, those are all put back into place. Mm -hmm. It's not just the structure of, okay, the temple's rebuilt. No, everyone then goes back into those roles. They go back into, they have a part to play. And right. in that, God still provides for them, just like right. he provided for them prior to um, the temple being right. destroyed. So there's still that provision. I, I like how you brought that out. Like there's the which is set apart for the Levites, and then that which is set apart for the descendants of Aaron. And, you know, again, just if you go back to Exodus and you look at how God sets apart the descendants of Aaron as his priests, but the Levites as a whole tribe mm -hmm. were responsible for temple worship. And so the, the subdivision within those. Um, and, and I think, you know, if we jump over to Revelation and, and, and even just think about Matthew, even mm -hmm. from the beginning, a, a, a part of that, is that Jesus is not... A descendant of Aaron and Jesus is not a Levite you know uh, Jesus is a descendant of Judah uh, he he according to the Old Testament really wouldn't have a priestly role in that respect and so this whole idea that Jesus is from Judah because he was of the priestly order of Melchizedek which again comes from Genesis so it's this whole this whole thing but but a pre-existing priesthood, not a subdivision kind right. of priesthood. So it's this overall thing where Jesus functions uh, in a priestly way, um, but also in a kingly way, uh, right. where the Levites and the descendants of Aaron, you know, that all descendants of Aaron are Levites, but not all Levites are descendants mm -hmm. of Aaron. Um, but Jesus is of a totally different nature. Um, and that's, it's important for us to remember that, especially as we look at some of these images from, uh, from Revelation in particular. But let's look at Matthew real quick first. Um, and, you know, um, I'm, I'm sure you could totally talk about the whole Caesarea Philippi thing. Uh, but that question that Jesus asked, you know, well, who do people say that I am? And it's a question that we still ask today. You right. know, well, who is this Jesus guy? Some people say well, he's a good teacher. You know, some people say he's a prophet. He's a prophet. Yeah. But 
this identification of you are the Messiah, you are the anointed one, you are the son of the living God. Um, but it's fascinating to me how Jesus tells Peter that he didn't just think of that on his own. Right. That was revealed by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> yeah, and I think that, I don't know, sometimes, I don't know, we get glimpses. Like, so you see this in the disciples. I mean, like, obviously he declares he's son of the living God, and all we have to do is read a few chapters and they're going to be screwing up again, you know? <laughs> and sometimes I think in our lives we get things so right, and then on the flip side we get things so wrong. And sometimes those ha things happen just, you know, right after one another. Um, and so I just always find it interesting, um, interesting how we can, I mean, he got it so right. And then just one paragraph later, he gets it wrong. Get behind me, <laughs> Satan. <laughs> it's, it's an amusing story, it's, but it's it, a cautionary it, tale. But, but at the same time, but how often do okay. we do the same thing? Right, and right, so, right, right, but right. thankfully, thankfully, in his mercy, in his patience with us, um, and, and the spirit, that spirit, it, it is present, and or he is present, the, the spirit is present, and things are revealed to us. But it, it is always interesting to me that it's like we get these glimpses, but we don't always have this full understanding. But I, but I guess the reassuring thing is, is like Jesus was standing in front of them, and they still... Right. He's there, and they still, even with those glimpses, and they still got things wrong. So sometimes right. that's a comfort that this isn't an excuse for unbelief. Right. It's it's, just... it's an acknowledgement of uh, why we need Jesus in the first place. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We can know who He is, and not always act on that appropriately. Um, and then still even have our doubts and our questions and our confusions. Um, and this whole, you know, again, I know we've talked about it before, but he's at Caesarea Philippi. He is at what would have been the red light district of the region, you know, at a place of uh, massive uh, perversion and uh, licentiousness and pagan prostitution and all the kind of stuff. And so why does he go to that particular place to then reveal himself to the disciples and then tell them not to tell anybody else who he is, but makes this little cryptic comment, you know, he renames Peter Simon, who's now Peter, meaning little rock, and on this rock I will build my church in the gates of Hades. And, you know, go back and read all about Caesarea Philippi and all that gate of Hades things. But the, the reign and the rule of Christ is 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 present and is coming is right. being fulfilled in our own lives daily and then ultimately will be fulfilled when Jesus returns again and all of the powers of the evil one will not be able to stand against it and so you know when we flip over to revelation um, and as you if you if you've been listening to any of us for a while you know that we don't always like to preach from Revelation because again it's it's using language that um, needs a fuller context to really explain and it's difficult to explain all of it within a little short sermon on any particular Sunday. We will do reading from it from time to time but uh, just the the big reminder that apocalyptic literature does mean that the cover is being taken off and God is revealing to us what has happened and where his action was present, what is happening and how his activity is present, and then what will happen and how his activity is present. And the biggest thing uh, in a short amount of time, um, Revelation is a, uh, a revealing of, uh, of, again, all those things. God has been at work, God is working, God continues to work, and ultimately God is victorious over everything. Okay. And so this image of the rider on the white horse, you know, immediately I go back to triumphal entry when Jesus came in on a humble donkey. Right. Because he was not intending to be that image of the earthly king. He, his rule and his reign was far beyond the provincial town of Jerusalem. Right. At around 30 AD. 
he is coming to rule on the white horse as king over all of creation for all time. Um, And that's a little tough for us to get because we are linear timeline people. And he is outside of that. And he is outside of that. Right. Um, But he's coming. And the description of him in his coming glory uh, with, you know, he is the word of God, the, the sword that comes out of his mouth, um, you know, ruling the nations with a rod of iron, treading out the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. And, you know, of course, we, we want to sing Battle Hymn of the Republic there, but, you know, not to say that God was not involved in the American Civil War. <laughs> right. But, but this is a little bigger is, than that. As big as that was, this, this is bigger a than that. Scale. Right. right. Larger scale. Uh, but the glimpses, even, that we see in our lives, you know. Mm-hmm. Wars and rumors of wars and, and evil that continues to exist and the questions that we ask ourselves, why does this continue to happen? Why do, why do your people suffer, O oh Lord? Uh, how long, O oh Lord? All of those questions. Um, he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Um, and he's coming to rule as king. Right. Well, we look forward to that day. We do. Uh-huh. There's I, yeah, right in that weird mix of it ooh. is like yeah, it's like that's yeah. Um, there will be wrath. Um, there, there will be judgment. Right. But there is goodness, and right. there is grace, and there is mercy, and there is love, and there is. He is he is the King of Kings and He is the Lord of Lords. He is right. He is all of that. And um, there will be wrath. There will be drawing up. There there, you know. Well, ultimately, for those in Christ whose <laughs> sins have been forgiven, we know that the wrath that we should have borne has already been borne by Jesus on the cross. Right. And again, this is this weird time sort of thing. It's like God can take all of eternity's sins and put it into one place at one time on Jesus Christ. And so when he does come to return, this is not fearful for those in faith. Right. This is with expectation. Um, and, and the challenge even that we experience with Revelation is we can get too bound up in some of these temporal things right. and forget um, that when it comes to the description of Jesus fighting against his enemies, there's, re- there's no contest. There, it's just evil is wiped out. Right. And people right. do away with all of it's, that. It's not like it needs to be some big struggle anymore. It's like we struggle now, yes, but when he comes again, it's done. It's done. Right. Um, and, and in that we glorify. And you know, the rest of Revelation is really just talking about the new heaven and the new earth and all of the wonderful things that heaven is going to be um, and the trials and tribulations that we currently experience because we are all living in our own last days. These are the end times for all of us, right. even if it stretches on another thousand years. Right. Um, at the end of that time, at the right time, Jesus comes and sets it all to right. So, yeah, that's why it's kind of hard to preach sometimes on Revelation because you're just like, you you got to take the whole thing. Right. And you don't always have time to take the whole thing. But um, but the Psalms are always good. And I think all of the Psalms that we read today, they're familiar Psalms to us. Right. Uh, I don't know if I have anything more really to say about any of them. No. Okay. Anything you wanted to add? I don't think so. I know I've missed doing this, and it's just I like know. I feel a little out of practice. <laughs> I feel like I've I feel like I've talked too much. It's like, but um, good stuff. Yeah. It was good stuff. It was good stuff. It is good. It is good stuff. It is good stuff. Um, anything? Church on Sunday. Right. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock and eleven fifteen. Yep. Um, Sunday school in between. 
it's been a few weeks since we've done that. You right. know, we're back into right. our back into our schedule back there. So short week next week at the church because of the Thanksgiving break. Um, Tara Davis is actually preaching oh, this Sunday. Yes. Really excited about Tara preaching. And um, and then Advent starts not the week after, but the week after that, right? Because we got the nineteenth and the twenty sixth. Christ the King Sunday on the twenty sixth. We'll be actually doing a whole reading Great. of Revelation. From beginning to end, with very little commentary, probably no commentary, just maybe a prayer and, and read it. So, uh, blessed are those who read the word, and blessed are those who hear it. So, maybe on the twenty sixth, um, if you can't be present with us, I think we'll live stream it. But um, certainly, we'd like okay. to have you present with us here in the sanctuary for the reading of Revelation. It takes about an hour and a half, uh, four o'clock to five thirty, right? Yes. Perfect. Great. We'll do that. So, you want I would, to close this in prayer. I would be happy to. Great. Heavenly Father, thank you for um, this opportunity to read your word together today. And I pray that um, <clears throat> that uh, as we hear the words, that as Joel prayed earlier, that we are transformed and that those who, uh, who hear this and um, that they, they feel your presence and that they are transformed by your very words. And we uh, just... As we are living in these crazy times, we just, um, I pray that we look to you and that we know that none of these things surprise you um, and that we lean into you and that we rest in you and that we know that even though we may not understand that difficult times um, do happen, but you are constant and you are true to your word, to your covenants, to your promises and that um, you are that constant and steady um, presence and with your full and complete love for each of us. And I pray that as we um, are heading into this Thanksgiving week, um, holiday week, that, um, that we um, enjoy our time with our family and that people um, enjoy that time and have safe travels and that as we give thanks that we recognize that all good things all things come from you and we give thanks and glory to you and all of those things and in jesus holy name we pray amen, amen. thanks everybody look forward to talk to you later take care bye-bye